Happy Week. We are coming to the end, the finale, and we're super excited because we have some amazing chefs today who are going to be doing cooking demos, celebrating Caribbean culture, their heritage, their roots, and it's going to be really, really good. So we have our friend here today who's representing for the Bahamas, and this is Chef Raquel. Chef Raquel is not just a chef. She's also, you know, just has amazing energy. She's an author. She's a food entrepreneur, and she can explain a little bit better than I can what she's up to in the kitchen. So Raquel, it's nice to see you. Oh, Adam, it is wonderful to be ending Black Foodie Week with you guys again. I look forward to it every year. And I have such an exciting dish that just really goes back to my childhood and so close to my heart that I'm going to be sharing with all of your viewers. And uh, for those of you who don't know me, yes, I'm Chef Raquel Fox, also known as Island Girl, because I'm an Island Girl at heart. I'm also a chef and instructor at George Brown College in Toronto. Um, I'm a cookbook author. I produce my own wonderful brand of sauce line. They're Finnish culinary sauces. And I'm so excited that they're officially going to be throughout Canada in all Loblaws November. And uh, let me just get my little plug in here with my sauce line that I'm so proud of. These beautiful bottles that really represent my country. They are, I have, um, my flavor pepper sauce here guys and it is really a flavorful blend of fruits vegetables and scotch bonnet chilies but you get a subtle heat at the back end and then of course i have a delicious mango jerk sauce as well as the ultimate bahama steam sauce so look out for it and uh we're starting in canada and going worldwide so excited <laughs> Awesome. This is big, big news. I'm so excited for you. And I'm and I got a taste of your sauces. So I'm glad that the world is now going to get to have a taste of it. So everybody needs to go out and buy these sauces. Um, can you tell us like what you're whipping up today and, and why you chose this recipe? Oh, OK, so, you know, when you guys reached out to me for a quintessential bohemian dish, it had to be none other than the island where my grandmother is from called Andras. And mm -hmm. Andras is known as the land of crabs. So hence, I made the most, I guess, dear to my heart, special recipe, which is Andras crab and rice with peas and coconut oil. So mm -hmm. this is no regular, you know, um, crab from the ocean these are made with land crabs all right and we know land crabs throughout the west indies um i have some here and they are okay. when i tell you so flavorful to me more flavorful than um any type of ocean crab oceanic crabs these it flavors your rice edin it's as if your rice has delectable uh, crab flavor all through it and then hit it with some coconut, some earthy pigeon peas. Let me tell you, this rice dish, you don't need anything else. It's, it just, it's a meal within itself, a one pot dish and it is just spectacular. So I can't wait to share it with everyone, my grandmother's recipe. And then I didn't forget about my vegan friends. So okay. throughout, the Baham throughout the Bahamas, rice dishes are our specialty. And growing up, I love going back when we, whenever we have Black Foodie Week to those really old school recipe that you can't even find in the restaurants anymore. So this is something special for everyone where we use pumpkin. So it's a pumpkin rice with also corn. In the Bahamas, we have corn and rice. We have the pumpkin and rice. This today, I'm mixing both because that's how I roll. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's flavorful with some uh, coconut oil as well. That's our oil of choice. And also this time, we're going to be using some green pigeon peas, which is the, the pigeon peas in its younger state. And okay. um, I used to just pick them off the trees. My grandmother did her own farming as well as my grandfather and just eat them for snacks. They're so delicious. So okay. you can find all of these ingredients 
throughout your local Caribbean supermarket, most and sometimes mainstream supermarkets, and as well sometimes as Asian supermarkets. So everything here, I'll be talking about the ingredients as we cook along and uh, make sure that everyone can find or ac have access to these ingredients and it becomes a part of your family and hopefully you'll think of me whenever you make these delic delicious rice dishes. <laughs> I'm excited. You know, you're combining three of my favorites. I absolutely love crab. I love rice. Mm. I didn't even know you're gonna add some pumpkin in there because I love <laughs> pumpkin too. So I, I'm glad we have options. So all the plant-based folks, there's something here for you too. Now, mm. um, when it comes to Caribbean cooking and especially Bahamian cooking, are there any core ingredients you, you think people should have in their, their pantry? Absolutely. So okay. thyme, okay? Whether you call it thyme or thyme, <laughs> it's always arguments <laughs> with that, but fragrant thyme leaves are a must. Um, also browning, all right? We know that gives mm -hmm. our rice a melanin. <laughs> so uh, browning is a staple. Um, and, you know, basically you can find um, the bohemian cooking, you really can find all the vegetables in your refrigerator. There's always, you know, um, a marpa, garlic, uh, celery, onions, some bell peppers, and um, tomato paste. So our rice is extremely flavorful, and they're really readily available, these ingredients inside of your supermarkets. Okay, so this is very, very accessible. I'm excited because yeah. I, I, I needed to know that I could find these ingredients. And it seems like everything you mentioned is very simple and easy to find and things that will flavor all of your meals. I love browning. Oh, you know, I love to have that rich color. Um, yeah. And some people make their own browning. Can you explain what, what that is? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm about to do that as a matter of fact with the okay. vegan rice. Um, so we like to say that our rice dishes are the color of our people, all beautiful shades of black. So mm -hmm. you would notice with my crab and rice, we're going to go with a darker brown color where I'll be using the browning. And with my vegan rice, I always love or always had my corn and rice, pumpkin and rice with, you know, a lighter brown shade. So I'm not going to use browning for that. Instead, I'm simply going to be using dark brown sugar and make my own browning, which is basically just caramelizing this dark brown sugar it's going to give not so much the sweetness but just that molasses flavor and it's also mm. going to give you just enough color for this beautiful rice dish nice nice okay i'm excited to get started so what's the first step okay so we are going to start with none other than andrew's crab and rice so as I mentioned, Andrus is land of the crabs. And to make this, of course, it's always easier when you prepare everything in advance. And this is what I've done here. Now, with any crab, you know, when you crack it open, you're going to see this yellow mustard, what us bohemians also call the fat of the crab. And this is the flavor of the rice, guys. So you have to just extract that. And if you don't happen to have land crabs, then go ahead and use your favorite crab and just open it up and take out this mustard. Now, if you don't want to do that, in Asian supermarkets, they also have in the tubes crab fat or crab paste. And you can also use a little of that. All right. I love extracting my own fat. So... Starting with this rice, as I mentioned, we're going in with coconut oil. I love a lot of it. So this is a quarter cup. And coconut oil is safe to use up to a temperature of 350 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So it has a higher smoke point than olive oil. And uh, as soon as you apply heat to it, it's like aromatherapy, so fragrant. All right, so coconut oil goes in. I have about a quarter piece of onion dice that's going in. So all we're going to be doing is sauteing my onions till it's translucent. I'll go ahead and add the celery. This is about one stalk, all diced up. I have green bell pepper, red bell pepper, 
just a quarter piece diced up as well. And basically we are just going to cook this for about two to three minutes. And this is just all the love that's going into this rice to make it a spectacular one pot dish. Now, garlic, I'm a garlic fanatic, love it. So I went in with four cloves of garlic that I've minced. Nice. You can use okay. you can, your discretion, right? If you only want mm -hmm. two, then go ahead and use two. But I am a garlic lover. I'm with you on that. That's so much flavor. <laughs> Okay. And you want to have and flavorful rice, you know? That's right. It's got to yeah. have flavor. You know, when you put a plate of Caribbean rice in front of me, Edin, yes. I should not need salt, black pepper, anything else with it. Because I'm respecting that that's the flavor that you want me to eat it, right? So to appreciate it the way you eat it. And that's why this rice, I have nailed down the measurements to a T. Okay. <laughs> Did you so, find that your, your grandma measured or is this something that you had to like add to the recipe? Oh no, she <laughs> never measured. You know, being an author of a cookbook, I had to, and, and a culinary chef, I had to really realize that everyone don't understand like this much or like so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I really got into measurements and, um, you know, even when I'm on my television segments, you'll notice I eyeball a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's just ingrained in me. So yeah. now I'm going to add that delicious, flavorful and uh, potent crab mustard. So that is the true flavor of this rice dish. Is that mustard something that people often neglect, like neglect and remove and throw out? Is it something where you have to like really make sure you, you know save what? it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, a lot of people, whether in the U.S. and, you know, they look at it like, oh, you know, it's it's the guts. You know, they think of it yeah. like that. But no, it is liquid gold to us. It's the flavor. It seasons your pot. It flavors this rice dish and it's spectacular. So now nice. I'm going to go in with two tablespoons of tomato paste. Okay. Add that little acidity in here. And It'll probably add some nice color as well. Oh, it sure does. And nice. also I have about a tablespoon of dark brown sugar. Now, like my aunt always say, people are like, oh, you add sugar to your rice? My aunt always says it's about balance. Sugar is not a sweetener, it's a seasoning. <laughs> Ooh, I like that phrase. Right? And that's absolutely true. When you're cooking, you want to think about how these flavors, you know, blend with the other flavors. You know, if it's really acidic, what are you going to do to balance that out? Maybe you want to add absolutely. a touch of sweetness. Right? Or yeah. if you happen to use uh, too much peppers in your mm -hmm. food, sugar is going to balance out that heat as well. Ooh. So. That's yes. what cooking is about, right? <laughs> Playing yes. with these ingredients and finding the perfect mix. Now, salted beef. This is what we use to flavor our rice in the Bahamas. When okay. some people are making their crab and rice, they don't add it. I grew up with my grandmother adding this in everything. I love the flavor, it's tender, and it's readily available. Uh, accessible at many Caribbean um, supermarkets. I've also found it in mainstream supermarkets. You want to pre-boil it, dice it up, and it goes in. Nice. That flavor is just amazing. And if you can find some pickled salted beef, even Ooh. more flavor, more better. And I was able to find pickled salted beef in the Caribbean area in Scarborough. Wow. Okay. Can you explain these flavors? I've never heard of pickled salted beef. Okay. So what so, would it, yeah. So it's, it's basically pickling, right? So mm -hmm. you're going to add to other than um, salt to cure your beef, you're going mm -hmm. to add some vinegars, some allspice berries, bay leaf, so on and so forth. And if they check out um, my Island Girl Foods TV channel on YouTube, they will mm -hmm. also see a demo on how to pickle your salted beef. 
I've pickled many things I did not know that I could like pickle beef. I, I guess oh. I just never thought about it. I, you just, you know, put oh, me on to something. Yeah. Trust me on this. When you pickle your beef, it yeah. is slap your mama good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you. That. <laughs> I know, I know. I gotta try this crab mustard. I gotta try this salted beef, and then the pickled salted beef. Yeah, be you be will. Salted. You will thank me for it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with none other than a cup of pigeon peas. You can find this in your ethnic aisles, and um, as I mentioned, it's very earthy. It's one of my favorite peas beside black eyed peas. But um, this we traditionally go in with pigeon peas. And That's of course, good. I also have browning. So this is about a tablespoon that's going in to give my rice a darker color. Nice. Oh, I just I wish can... you could smell this already. I know, I'm so <laughs> sad because for everybody watching, I've been in the kitchen like physically with each of the other chefs. So I always get a little sample and now I'm just like, you know, I, I'm craving these foods. <laughs> And now the star of the show, these okay. land crabs. In Trinidad, they call them mud crabs. Mud crabs. And okay. um, if you're visiting Andras, make mm -hmm. sure you really appreciate the culture by going on a midnight crab excursion. So you'll go on a midnight crab excursion. They'll teach you how to catch these crabs. They're usually in the mangroves, you know, and wow. um, they eat a diet of coconut, um, any type of vegetables. So you can imagine the meat, right? How the flavorful flavor. it is. So, yeah. So that sounds in like super interesting and scary at the same time. Because you can have claws <laughs> and- It is scary. <laughs> if yeah. you like a thrill, <laughs> yeah. go crabbing in Andros. So I love I, this. I, I think when people think of Bahamas, they just know Nassau and like, yeah. cruises and you know just the main island but there's so many different islands and like unique yes. parts of, of bahamas we have over 700 islands about mm -hmm. 30 of them are inhibited andrews yeah. happen to be the largest at 20 2300 square miles and yeah. it is also known edin for yeah. the most underwater cave systems the most blue yeah. holes worldwide all the mm -hmm. divers go to Andres to dive in these blue holes where we still have prehistoric fossils in them till this day. Wow. It's spectacular. I actually wow. wrote a play script about it. Got to hit you up on that because we got to talk. Oh, okay, <laughs> amazing. Okay, you got a lot of different talents. I oh, think yeah. one thing that I love about you is that you always represent for your culture and you're such a great ambassador to the Bahamas. The Bahamas is Thank such you. a beautiful country, you know? That's actually yeah. the first place that I went to out of North America. That was like the first. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, when I was wow. in school, we took a, <laughs> I love my, it. I loved well, you it there. Have to, we have to do a, a black foodie island hopping throughout the Bahamas. Yes, <laughs> yes. That so another fun story is my roommate um, in college as well. She was from the Bahamas and she used to bring, um, I always tell everybody this, but she would bring conch like frozen in her suitcase <laughs> and then make Me conch too. fritters. Yes, yes right? <laughs> I used to bring it. Under, listen, that is so yeah. special. I would put piles of my clothes on top. I'm sorry. Yeah. So customs didn't see. <laughs> and I would bring it to college and basically feed the whole dormitory with all these wonderful conch dishes. So yes. <laughs> that was something to look forward to. I think the fact that everybody has a story of like smuggling some, you know, some some some, some ingredients with them, you know, back to yeah, North America. Well. Oh but, my uh, gosh. But um yeah. So man of crap. Yes. And conch so is this delicious. Speaking of conch, we also yeah. have a delicious conch and rice. Maybe Ooh, dry okay. conch. Uh delish. <laughs> nice. So I'm just going to go in with some thyme and put in a bay leaf in there. And now to wrap this up, I have about four cups of long green white rice. And um, of course, we always rinse our rice until the water runs clear. Mm -hmm. So this goes in. And you know, I must say some people 
add the water first, but in my family, we toast our rice. And you know, if you're ever having problem with how to cook the perfect rice, try this method. This is the method that I teach at George Brown College when people complain about needing a rice cooker. And I said, oh no, I'm gonna turn you into the rice cooker. So mm. if you toast your rice, you will get perfect one-on-one -on -one consistency rice mm -hmm. every time, Edin. You just can't go wrong with this method, okay? So toast your rice for about a minute or two, mm -hmm. and it will come out beautifully every time. So, I love this. I'm so glad you're giving this tip. We actually, we heard about it a little bit earlier in the week too, because a lot of people struggle with rice. And I yeah. used to be that person and I still rely on my rice cooker just to save time. But you know, in order to get that flavor, I know I got to become the rice cooker. Please <laughs> try it my way. And then you will say after this method, I mm -hmm. can't believe I ever used a rice cooker. This is so easy. Yeah. So now seasoning. I go in with just not salt, I'm all about flavor. So mm -hmm. this is Island Girl seasoned salt. This is also going to be coming to stores, but I we also have uh, the recipe so you can make your own. I always keep this next to my burners, next to my stove. I put it in soups, stews, rice, vegetables, any and everything. This is a true flavor enhancer. And all you need is two tablespoons of it. And it's loaded with uh, sea salt because you know I love my salt to taste like the ocean. And mm -hmm. we have garlic salt in here, actually granulated garlic, garlic powder, um, some smoked paprika and cumin. So all different ratios. Ooh. That sounds like a good blend. I need to try oh, that next. It's heavenly. Okay, yeah. so now all we're gonna do and this is the tip for the perfect rice, Edin. So mm -hmm. everyone watch. You want to have your water mm -hmm. already heated up. And look, all I'm going to do is add water until it covers my rice by half an inch. So you're going to eyeball or estimate. Got you. Okay. All right. That's half an inch. All right. Okay. Even if you go a little more, it's still going to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And now I'm going to just stir everything up and scraping at the bottom mm -hmm. to the glaze. Any sediments of all that flavor, I mm -hmm. want it in the rice, all right? So, and when you stir to the bottom, you feel all those sediments coming up. <laughs> so yes. that's called the glazing. And um, look at this already. So it, that color is beautiful. That color is beautiful. It looks so flavorful and rich. Oh my goodness. It looks as if it's go it's going to taste the same, flavorful yes. and rich. So, we like to just throw in. That's my bohemian uh, lingo there. <laughs> throw it in, throw in some time. Yeah. And we turn our heat on high. We're going to bring this up to a boil and add our lid and more importantly, now we're going to bring the heat down to the lowest setting and let this cook for 15 to 20 minutes. You're gonna have the perfect Andrew's coconut crab and rice with pigeon peas. Okay, so wow. that's recipe number one. I'm going to transfer it on low on okay. my stove to the back. Okay. And that's perfect. So we're ready for recipe number two. <laughs> okay, now we're going plant-based folks. So get ready because Chef Raquel has an alternative that is just as good with pumpkin and corn. She's remixing Absolutely. this to add both flavors together. And I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, when they think of pumpkin, maybe they're thinking of pumpkin spice or, you know, lattes and all the different like pies and things in the West. But pumpkin is such a big part of Caribbean cooking too. Oh yes, I cannot imagine um, mm -hmm. not passing, you know, pumpkin fields in the Bahamas mm -hmm. or just growing up without them. Because, you know, my grandmother, grandfather, we always had pumpkin. We've always had corn, um, the various peas, peppers, you name it. We were truly farm to table 
you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the way of healthy eating. And that's what I was so used to. And that's why I love supporting our farmers as well, because, you know, they work hard to put this delicious, healthy foods on our table without any preservative. We're eating healthy. I'm all about that life. Love it. Okay. Now, a vegan dish, mm -hmm. pumpkin, peas and rice, but also corn. And I love me a fresh corn. All right. Now you guys can go ahead and use frozen um, corn if, you know, it's easier for you, but it just does not amount to, you know, having a, a fresh corn husk and just, you know, pre-boiling it for 15 minutes and, you know, just using the knife and remove your kernels. It's amazing. I love it. Nice. Okay. So we're going to go in with our coconut oil again. Always a quarter cup for me because I love that coconutty flavor. <laughs> nice. Can you use coconut milk as well? Or do you think like coconut oil, it does the trick? Oh, you know what? I sometimes get crazy mm -hmm. and use coconut milk with coconut oil and fresh grated coconut. Wow. I love wow. coconut. <laughs> I'm with you. Same here. Same. Yep. So same thing. A quarter piece of diced onion. Okay. Celery. Oh, he's in, the he's like, yes, yes. It's so essential. Like if you're making even like a, a stew or anything, when you start off with this base, you're going to have so much more flavor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have all my peppers in again. That's green bell, red bell, celery, and of course, minced garlic. And this time I use two cloves of garlic. Gotcha. Do you end up doing a lot of prep in your kitchen? Like, do you have these things pre-chopped and you're ready to go? Or you always start from scratch in your, your house? You know what? I, I mix it up depending mm -hmm. on how much time I have to cook. You know, if I'm coming from work and I have a certain amount of time or if I meal plan the day before, um, I, I love to follow the rule to just prep everything because cooking is just so much easier once everything is prepped and all you're doing is adding in and it's fun. And then you have time to cook with a glass of wine or a mixed rum drink and really enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. You gotta have a good cocktail on the side. What would you actually, what would you pair with this? What is, what's a Bahamian drink that you would have on the side with this um, crab rice? Oh my goodness, listen, Gumbe mm -hmm. Smash. All right, it's a it's a rum drink, mixed rum drink, originated in Abaco, Bahamas. Okay. And when I tell you this drink is heavenly, first of all, if I introduce a friend or an associate, business partner, anyone to this drink, they never leave me alone. When are you gonna make us a batch of Goombay Smash again? I'm <laughs> talking this drink has coconut cream or coconut milk. It has pineapple juice orange juice, uh, three other type of rum, a spice, a coconut, a dark, uh, some lime, oh. Eden. <laughs> this is good. This sounds really good. It's amazing. So if you can't make um, or don't have all the rum and all the ingredients to make Goombay Smash, um, mm -hmm. just go ahead with a nice glass of wine. You know, go and pair it, mm -hmm. that crab and rice dish with a nice Sauvignon Blanc, with a nice... Um, Shannon Blanc, a white wine, Riesling, mm -hmm. all good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there's a couple of things that you could pair this with. Absolutely. Um, I'm somebody, so I, you tomato know, paste. tomato <laughs> paste. Okay. Starting yeah. off. So it's, it's very similar. So like, it's not like you have to do too much to, to veganize no. this meal at all. Not at all. Just all <laughs> delicious. I, I would call pumpkin and corn both a uh, very subtly sweet vegetables right yes. <laughs> they have that yes flavor so that's flavor within itself now mm -hmm. for my browning i'm just going in with some dark brown sugar again and okay. guys if you don't believe me watch what's going to happen here the sugar will add the balance of flavor as well as this beautiful light brown color for the mm -hmm. rice so if you're out of browning you don't always have to just jump in your car and, you know, drive on over to the supermarket, you can develop that with brown sugar. 
It's so okay. simple. Essentially, you're yes. just burning. I don't know if burning is the right way, word, but you're you're really cooking down the sugar and then cooking you're down it. the sugar, caramelizing yeah. it down, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. So it's all about to... making that caramel. <laughs> yes. If you guys Pumpkin. want an, uh, a fun cooking challenge, go ahead and make your own. Yeah. Make your own brownie. Okay. Now so pumpkin, pumpkin, okay. pumpkin goes in, and pumpkin is what we're just going to saute. And the thing is pumpkins don't take a long time to cook down. So, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want a mushy pumpkin dish. You know, we want it kind of, um, you know, just firm enough. Like, I guess like a, 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 if we added potatoes, you know. Got so, you. Yeah, so you would just saute the pumpkin for about, I would say about five minutes. And because this is, um, you know, we have a limited time to cook here. I'm you gonna go ahead, <laughs> right? I'm gonna go yeah. ahead and also add in my corn kernels. Now this yeah. is from two husk of corn. You don't have to add in all of it, but I really love corn. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going in with all of it. Nice. And continue to just cook and saute away. I also added my thyme already, but we are famous for adding thyme leaves as well as several sprigs of thyme. <laughs> Got you. So thyme is such an essential part of this. You know what I was wondering, Chef Raquel, is does in, in the Bahamas, do you guys have like a similar green seasoning as well as to like Trinidad and some of the other islands? You know, we really don't make our own green seasoning. I know what you're okay. talking about. What we love yeah. making is our own pepper sauces. Oh, so okay. we'll make a pepper sauce, but not mm -hmm. um, not so much uh, delicious green seasoning like Trinidad and, and the other islands, which I absolutely adore and love, <laughs> that yeah. green seasoning. But no, we don't make a marinade like that. Got you. So you guys really start from scratch. We and start then, from scratch, yes. Okay. Add the yes. whole time. Which is we add it all in the whole time. Okay, so now the same thing toasting your rice. You can never go wrong with the perfect rice if you mm -hmm. toast your rice first. But let me just say again to all of those who are going to say, I add my water in first. Yes, go ahead and add your water in first and estimate if that works for you. But this happens to work for me and my family. And it's a very simple way of teaching how to get the perfect rice every time. So this mm -hmm. is three cups of rent long white green rice. Got you. Do you ever like experiment and use basmati or anything else or you stick to this one? Oh, listen, yeah. throughout, throughout this pandemic, <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> headed to the supermarket for everything. So yes, yes. I have uh, used basmati. I have used, what else, other rice? I've, used? I've even used wild rice. <laughs> The wild rice wow. blend. You know, I use whatever I have. Um, mm -hmm. I'll make sure not to say that it is, you know, authentic bohemian rice, but I do that. But hey, mm -hmm. sometimes it's what you have at home. <laughs> and and sometimes, you know, you create the best meals out of accidents like that, out of what you have mm -hmm. sometimes. And, and, you know, don't be afraid to do it because most of the time I would say, oh my goodness, I never knew this would taste this way or taste so spectacular by using basmati or using another, you know, brown rice maybe or yeah. something else. So, hey, it's whatever suits you. Be happy and do you. <laughs> That's what I'm I with say. You. you know, there's also <laughs> a lot of like really healthy grains that come out of Africa. And so I really want to try this recipe and try using fonio, which is a grain Ooh, that I really yes. like. Um, yes. I'd probably have to add it a little bit later because it, later. it cooks pretty fast. Yeah. It's almost like a couscous, but there, oh. but there are other grains that um, that we use that I, I really love and enjoy, and I think they could be like a good rice alternative. If people are looking for something a bit lighter, you know. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. listen, Africa is the motherland. It's where we all inherited, you know, our style of cooking and these wonderful recipes and ingredients. So listen, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. That's true, <laughs> that's true. Anything, right? So now you can see the color is uh, a light brown color. 
And mm -hmm. uh, my pumpkin is soft enough. So once that happens, um, did I add my seasoning? Oh, two tablespoons of Island Girl seasoning salt. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. More flavor. Yes. Right? And so with this rice, at this point, you can also add some coconut milk if you want more, you know, that that whole enhancement of, of coconut, of a richer coconut flavor, then go mm -hmm. ahead and add coconut milk. You know, it's nothing wrong with that. And now, of course, the same thing with our heated water. That's a big thing. And I'm glad you brought this up because I'm just thinking about my mom. She always has a kettle ready always oh yeah whether we're making oh, yeah. like a stew or she's making rice and it's such a big thing because you you don't want the temperature to drop and you exactly. want to have it ready so ah good to have your yeah. kettle you got it have mm -hmm. the water and you know what um some bohemians and and people in general would prefer to use um stock over rice you know nothing wrong mm -hmm. with a good vegetable stock for more yeah. flavor Mm -hmm. um, I don't use the stock simply because I have my Island Girl seasoned salt and I don't want it to become too salty because some stock is really high in, in sodium. Yes. And so that's why I don't use heated stock. I prefer to just simply use some water. Mm -hmm. And now that this is coming up to a boil, lid on again, turn down very low. And now we can check on our andrus crab and rice with coconut oil so when we're checking on our rice we always want to make sure that we have a fork handy and we know fork is the perfect way to fluff our rice we want yes. fluffy rice okay oh and it's perfect time for the big reveal all right, I'll put this back over here. There's Let's see, no my cameraman can get this. It. Okay. <laughs> no rice cooking needed. Okay, my cameraman yeah. is ready for the reveal. Almost. <laughs> you have to see this. This is the money shot. <laughs> Ooh, I'm ready. Okay. Are we ready? This is a life skill, folks, how to make a <laughs> delicious pot of rice. So I'm so glad we got two rice dishes this week. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go. Moment of truth. Ooh, look at that crab and that's fine. Oh, so we take okay. out our thyme and mm -hmm. look at this rice. Look at I this rice. I can't believe how fast Perfect. this is. Wow. Perfect. Wow. And we're just going to fluff it. Very important to fluff. <laughs> Don't yes. use a spoon. We want fluffy rice. And, you know, we get down with this rice because we will take, we eat the rice first. And once yes. our crab is cool enough, we will bite into the biters, we call them. Uh, you know them, uh, most people know them as pinchers, but in islands we call them biters, <laughs> crab okay. biters. So we will get into that, into the body of the crab, um, into mm -hmm. some of this delicious, savory, salted beef with that coconut and the pigeon piece, the rice, the thyme, the spice. I wish you guys can just smell the aroma in this kitchen and taste this amazing rice dish guys here you have it andrew's wow. crab and rice with coconut oil that looks so good i just i need to know how long it's going to take me to take an uber to your place because <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> you're welcome anytime <laughs> Eddie. open invitation <laughs> oh wow it looks beautiful look how simple that was folks she was able to do this in under 40 minutes and have two delicious pots of rice ready one with crab one with pumpkin and corn this looks incredible and this is of course a recipe from your family right your grandmother family family recipe and mm -hmm. you know we love this rice so much we have a bohemian song about it my grandmother mm -hmm. always <laughs> sang it while she was cooking it and it's all about that delicious crab fat or crab mustard and mm -hmm. it goes go put the crab fat in the rice <laughs> if you want this crab and rice to be nice hey <laughs> <laughs> I love that it came with a song. That's beautiful. Ah, yes. That is beautiful. <laughs> so for everybody who's tuning in and if they want to get a taste of your cooking or your recipes, how can they go ahead and support you and how can they find you? 
Okay. Well, you can find me at Island Girl, girl spelled with a U, Island Girl mm-hmm. Foods on my social media handles, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on Island Girl Foods TV, where I will demo step by step how to make more delicious bohemian recipes, some other Caribbean recipes. And of course, my cookbook, Dining in Paradise, the first of its kind in over... I would say over 30 years to be published by a major publishing company. And uh, we have beautiful photos in here from the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism, where I work with them as well. And uh, these are recipes that are from my childhood, as well as, you know, a bit of fusion in there from my travels throughout the Caribbean and the recipes I love. You can find them on, um, you can find this cookbook on Amazon, um, Indigo, wherever cookbooks are sold. So from me to you guys and your family, dine in paradise with me. (laughs) Yes, you guys, I have a copy and I can tell you it's really dope. So make sure you guys get a copy of the cookbook. Make sure you find her products in stores. This was the second last session of Black Foodie Week, but the Black Foodie Challenge is going to continue all year round. So we're encouraging everybody to go taste, uh, uh, get a taste of the Caribbean, you know, support a black restaurant order in or go check out a patio. Um, You can find restaurants in your area by going onto the Black Foodie Week microsite. Just go onto blackfoodie.co and it'll, you'll find it there. And you can enter your postal code and then find a black owned restaurant in your neighborhood and try to get some of these Caribbean flavors sent to you. Or if you want to try some West African or East African, there's something there for you. Um, We also have another cooking session coming up with Chef Billman. He's going to be taking us on a journey to Barbuda Barbuda? Did I say this right? Oh, no. <laughs> Barbuda, don't get me. I got to work on my pronunciation, but we've got something coming up that's going to be really awesome with him. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you so much, Chef Raquel, and have a great rest Thank of you. your night. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.